Hi students. In this video, we will cover questions number 73 to 77 of the 2024 SHSAT handbook. Go ahead and grab a notebook and a pencil and let's get started. 73. Between which two consecutive integers is the fraction 29 over 7? Our quick tip is to convert the improper fraction into a mixed number. So 29 divided by 7 is 4 and 1 seventh, right? Because 7 into 29 goes 4 times. 7 times 4 is 28. And the remainder is 1. So that becomes our numerator. So we have 4 and 1 seventh because we're going to keep the denominator. And the question is between which two consecutive integers is this fraction, right? So 4 and 1 seventh is going to be positioned right between 4 and 5 on a number line. It's going to be somewhere over here. So we know that our correct answer is choice C. Let's try out 74. For 74, a customer wants to buy a pair of hiking boots. I don't know how many of you guys have been hiking before, but those boots can definitely come in handy. The original price of the boots is $85.75. The store is offering a 15% discount on all boot purchases. The customer also has a coupon for an additional 25% off the sale price. And finally, you know we gotta pay some taxes. So the tax rate is 8.5%. So what is the final cost of the boots, including the tax to the nearest cent? Let's start off by calculating the 15% discount. Remember, when applying a 15% discount, you're really paying 85% of the price. So we're going to multiply 0.85 times 85.75. Whatever that value is, the customer also has a 25% off coupon. So guess what? They will only be paying 75% of this price. And finally, the tax rate is 8.5%. So technically, we want to go ahead and multiply by 1.085. This is the fastest way to solve this problem. 85.75 times 0.85 is going to have four places after the decimal because we have two places here and two places here for a total of four places after the decimal. Let's start multiplying. So five times five is 25. Seven times five is 35 plus two is 37. Five times five is 25 plus three is 28. And five times eight is 40 plus two is 42. We have our placeholder right here. And now we have eight times five is 40, carry the four. Eight times seven is 56 plus four is 60, carry the six. Eight times five is 40 plus six is 46. And eight times eight is 64 plus four is 68. We're gonna add up these two numbers. So we have five, seven, eight, 8, 12, and 7. And as we said before, we need to have four decimal points in the final answer. So that's 72.8875. But just to round to the nearest cent, our answer is going to be 72.89. Now we're going to go ahead and multiply 72.89 by 0.75. Let's get started. After multiplying 72.89 times 0.75, remember the customer is paying 75% of the price after applying the 25% discount. We're left with $54.67. The final step is to identify the tax. So we're going to multiply 54.67 times 1.085. So after multiplying $54.67 times 1.085, we get 59.31695. Make sure you compare your notes to what you see here on my screen. The final answer requires us to round to the nearest cent. So we have $59.32. So the correct answer is choice G. Now this problem was quite a doozy, but just try your best to incorporate as many shortcuts as you can. Remember, Instead of finding 15% and then having to subtract, you can find 85% of the total amount and then 75% of the total amount and then 108.5% of the total amount. That is the fastest way to solve this problem. Question 75. Sheila is saving money for her summer vacation. 
She starts the summer with a balance of $90 and plans to save 15% of her earnings each week. She earns the same amount each week. After 12 weeks, Sheila has saved a total of $472.59. She did pretty good. How much money did Sheila earn each week? Let's set up our equation. 90 plus 15% times E, which is our earnings. And then we're going to multiply 0.15 times the weekly earnings by 12. That total is equal to $472.59. Let's combine. We have 90 plus, we can go ahead and multiply 0.15 times 12. Since 15 times 12 is 180, but 0.15 has two decimal places, we can move the decimal point two places to the left here. So we now have 90 plus 1.8 E equals 472.59. I'll write that one more time. Our next step is to subtract 90 on both sides. When we subtract 90, we have 1.8E equals 382.59. Finally, we're gonna divide both sides by 1.8. Remember, we don't like to divide by decimals in mathematics, so our goal is typically to turn the denominator into a whole number. So I'll move the decimal point one place to the right, move this decimal point one place to the right. Now we have 3,825.9 divided by 18. Let's go ahead and divide. I know that 18 can go into 38 two times because 18 times two is 36 and our remainder is going to be two. Now 18 into 22 goes one time. So our remainder is four and 18 into 45 goes two times because 18 times two is 36 and our remainder is nine. Now we have 99 divided by 18. We should know that that goes five times because 18 times five is 90. And we're still left with nine. So we're gonna add an extra zero, put our remainder of nine right next to the zero to give us 90. And now we have 90 divided by 18 is five. But in all honesty, when we got started here, we already saw that 38 divided by 18 was two. So automatically I started checking out my answer choices and I noticed that answer choice D and C should have been eliminated because the initial number here was two. After 18 divided into 38 went two times, we had a remainder of two. So we had 22 divided by 18 was one. So if I had to compare answer choice A and B, I would go ahead and eliminate B because the second number is one and not six. So in all honesty, we could have gotten our answer after only the first two steps of our division. But I still encourage you to finish out the problem, get the best practice you can while you're preparing for this exam so that no matter what gets thrown your way on the actual test, you're prepared. Let's check out question number 76. For what value of x is the proportion shown above true? I know it may look a little different, but these are two equivalent ratios. And remember, the formal definition of a proportion are two equivalent ratios. So we have x over 35 equals 20 over 28. Now that we have two equivalent fractions, we can go ahead and cross multiply. So 28x equals 35 times 20. I don't know about you, but I prefer to leave the numbers in this format because it allows us an opportunity to cancel out. That way we don't have to multiply to get very large numbers and then have to go ahead and simplify all over again. So now I know that I'm gonna divide both sides by 28. And since our answer is expressed in this way, we can go ahead and look for common factors. Let's take a look at 35 and 28. We know that both of these numbers share a factor of seven. 35 divided by seven is five and 28 divided by seven is four. Finally, we know that 20 and four share a factor of four. Four divided by four is one and 20 divided by four is five. Our last step is simply to multiply five times five. So the final answer is 25 and that is answer choice F. Question number 77 is an arithmetic problem where we are going to use the order of operation. Remember our acronym GEMS. G stands for grouping symbols. E stands for exponents and radicals. M is multiplication and division from left to right. And S is subtraction and addition from left to right. 
Let's start off with our grouping symbols. Three minus eight is negative five and negative five plus two is negative three. So we have negative three in the denominator raised to the second power. In our numerator, we don't really have any operations happening within the parentheses, but we do see several exponents. Three squared is nine plus negative eight to the second power is 64 plus two to the second power is four. For our next step, we're gonna go ahead and combine like terms in the numerator. Our numerator is now 77 because nine plus 64 is 73 and 73 plus four is 77. And our denominator is negative three to the second power, which is nine. So the correct answer is choice C. If you learned something in this video, please go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe. See you in the next video.